When it comes to the tech scene, Huawei has had a meteoric rise, from newcomer in 2012 to industry leader by 2018. But the last few years have not been without its challenges. With political tensions getting in the way of its planned expansion to the US, a trade ban taking away Google Play services from Huawei phones, and restrictions that have put a wedge on its dominance in the 5G space. But while tough, none of this has stopped the company from boldly pressing forward. Recently, at the company's sprawling Zhongshan Lake campus in China, its annual developer conference took place. But if you weren't paying attention, no worries, because today we've partnered with Huawei to recap the most important announcements from the event. Pay close attention because what happened at HDC reveals how Huawei is forging its own path and clues us in to what the future might be like for the company and for all those that rely on it. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, and you're watching Gadget Map. The biggest news to come out of the Huawei Developer Conference 2020 is Harmony OS 2.0. 2.0, Huawei's own operating system, which I first saw glimpses of, running on this Honor TV, I had the opportunity to tinker with during a trip to Huawei HQ last year. At HDC, no less than CEO Richard Yu promised that the first smartphones running Harmony OS will be coming sometime in 2021. This year, developers will already get access so that they can get a head start. Now, Harmony OS is built around the desire to create a seamless experience when it comes to 5G and IoT. The vision behind Harmony OS and the reason why it's named that is for it to be just one operating system that will run not just on phones and computers, but wearables, smart home products, cars, and other Internet of Things devices taking the best of existing mobile operating systems and making it more secure, better performing, and adaptable to all scenarios where technology touches your life. Theoretically, developers will only need to create an app once, and that should be able to scale depending on the device it's running on. And the company is opening it up to developers around the globe. In the meantime, these Huawei smartphones are getting the next version of Emotion UI real soon. EMUI 11, based on Android 10, comes with a whole bunch of new features. I've had the chance to test out the new beta on my Huawei P40 Pro Plus, and here are some of my favorite new features. More always-on-display options, including some Mondrian-inspired art that you can customize based on your favorite colors. Or even colors that match your outfit, which for me means one thing different shades of blue. My favorite feature has to do with multitasking, and it doesn't require a big screen display like on the Mate XS. You can have more than one app open at once. Even third-party apps like Twitter can float on your screen. You can resize these windows or tuck them away as bubbles for easy access when you need the app again. Other changes are more subtle, like live icons. Try turning on eye comfort mode, for example, and watch the icon wink. Subtle tweaks to animations and haptics are aimed at keeping you focused and more in tune with whatever it is you're doing on your phone. All of these refinements are a result of research from their Human Factors Engineering Lab. Finally, there's a new document scanner built into the Notes app, which also lets you convert the scanned document to text so that you don't have to type it out. There's also a host of privacy features, including the ability to strip a photo of all its metadata before sending it to someone else, biometric locks for encrypted memos, and a whole bunch of European privacy protection certifications. One of their big points of focus this year, Huawei's app gallery is off to an amazing start. The numbers are impressive. 490 million users, 261 billion apps downloaded, and 1.8 million developers globally. Huawei has managed to attract some big names, including TomTom Tom for navigation, ride-sharing app Bolt, live streaming platform Kumu, and multi-platform messaging apps like Line and Telegram. Let's see what else they're doing across the different verticals. Partnerships with IGG and Lilith Games has led to the release of immensely popular titles like Lords Mobile, Rise of Kingdoms, and AFK Arena. E-commerce platforms AliExpress and Lazada are there for anyone wanting to scratch their shopping bones. Russia's largest bank, Sberbank, has also partnered with Huawei to roll out its own contactless payment service. 
And for those who live in countries where travel for leisure is already possible, Booking.com and Agoda are there as well. Now, developers who choose to integrate with Huawei Core will be able to tap into a whole bunch of services that allow for a more personalized travel experience. If you're in the US and are wondering what are these apps, none of them I'm familiar with, trust me, they're big elsewhere in the world. More in line with Huawei's global strategy, which combines a focus on global apps, but also local ones, delivering services that are only relevant to one particular region. Of course, this is a consumer tech channel, so let's not forget about Huawei's hardware announcements. Six new devices strengthening its ecosystem of products were launched at HTC. Two new laptops, the MateBook X and MateBook 14, the sports car-esque Watch GT2 Pro and the Watch Fit and two new headphones, the FreeBuds Pro, the world's first dual antenna wireless buds, and the more fitness-oriented Freelace Pro. These new devices integrate seamlessly with the rest of Huawei's existing portfolio, as well as services like Huawei Share and MeTime. There is a lot of work to be done, but as a tech fan, I'm excited to see where all of this leads. Huawei has a track record of overcoming challenges, and I'd really like to see them succeed because we do need another big player in this space. And from the looks of it, at least what we saw at HDC, the groundwork has been set and the gears are in motion. What do you guys think will happen next? Let me know in the comments section below. As always, subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we post a new video. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And as always, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.